with carbon. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You broke up a little bit. Okay, if it's okay with you, we will go ahead and start it. Yeah, that sounds great to us. Excellent. Uh, this meeting at AMA Groundwater Users Advisory Council to order. Today is Wednesday, August 15th, 2021, and the time is 10.02 a.m. This meeting is held virtually. I'm Chris Marley, the chairman, and uh, will please, please introduce themselves. Yes, good morning. This is Jim Holt. Good morning. This is Leslie Grazer. Good morning. This is Kay Sitta with the City of Prescott. Is John Munderlow there? Uh, John Munderlow, Bob Recker, we're in the same room, so it appears under my name. Oh, excellent. Well, we have a quorum. Would the ADWR staff members please introduce themselves? Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Kyle Miller, AMA Director. Kennedy Shepard, GUAC Coordinator. Melissa Sykes, the Water Management Assistance Program Coordinator. Jenna Norris. Governor's Water Council Coordinator. Maggie Martin, Management Plan Specialist. Okay, if that's all our, our uh, ADWR folks um, and, and AMA staff introductions, uh, if audience participants are interested in it, introducing yourselves, please type your name and affiliation into the chat box. And I would like to start with agenda item two, webinar logistics. Uh, Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I just want to go over some webinar logistics before we get started. We do ask that members of the public please keep your phones muted during the meeting. This helps with any audio feedback. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments throughout any agenda item, please feel free to put those in the chat box and they will be read and addressed at the end of each presentation. Uh, but if you do wish to speak to the council, the call to public will be your time to do so. Also, this meeting is being recorded and it will be posted to our website once the recording is generated. And if you are having any technical difficulties, please feel free to contact our ADWR help desk. They're there for you and their contact information is on the screen. And that's all I have. Thank you. Excellent. <clears throat> Agenda item number three, GUAC chair announcement. Uh, that would be me, the chairman. I wanted to let uh, everyone know that this is my last meeting with the Groundwater Users Advisory uh, Council. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you guys and uh, uh, hope you guys do well in the, in the future days. Um, the uh, item number four, agenda item number four, Prescott AMA Groundwater Monitoring. I believe Aaron will provide an update on the ADWR's groundwater monitoring efforts in the Prescott AMA. Aaron, I see you're unmuted, but if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Hmm. Oh, if uh, if Aaron's uh, sound system isn't working right now, we could 
we could move uh, move on to the next agenda item. And can you hear me? What was that, John or Jim? This is Aaron. Aaron. We heard you. Okay, perfect. I just changed the um, mic. I changed the microphone. <clears throat> All right, so you can click under the next slide. This is an overall table of the wells that we monitor across the Birdie Basin as well as the Prescott AMA. I mean, I don't need to go into detail and read off every single number, but the top, the top is just what we would measure during a during a basin sweep. The middle section is our index wells. We've got a mix of annual, semi-annual, quarterly, and transducer wells, the automated index wells. And at the bottom, you see the sweep, the basin sweeps that we've done up here. <clears throat> we last did one in 2017, and we are scheduled to do one in the spring of 2022. So we will be back out there again. Right now we are in the process of putting together a report based on the data from the 2017 sweep. So that will hopefully be published before the new year. <clears throat> Go to the next slide. And this is a map of the index wells across both basins. So primarily in the Prescott AMA, we just have annual index wells along with some automated transducers. Um, up in the Big Chino, especially, is where we have where we have the semi-annual and the quarterly measurements. We go to the next one. Um, the next couple slides are just examples of. Uh, I think they're all transducer wells. So when the monitor wells got drilled in the big Chino, we were we had originally started doing them as quarterly or yeah, quarterly manual measurements, and then we ended up going to transducers and they were all installed about a year ago. So we were running into an issue. Some of the casings were a little bit tall. So these are not our standard box transducers, uh, our group was able to find a solution to where they can be installed in the same casing without having to install anything else. Uh, you just screw in a bolt on the side of the casing and everything is housed inside the well casing. And click to the next slide. This is one of our more traditional setups. We've got a white shelter with all the data logger and battery and everything and there's a little satellite on the outside of the box that allows it to transmit so you can download all that data and see it in real time. And then in the this is one of um, this well with the box on it is monitor well 4F1 and in the background is monitor well 4G. And that one's got one of the newer setups. This 4F1 just had a shorter casing that allowed for the box to be put on top of it. Go to the next slide. So there's 4G with 4F1 in the background. And you'll notice on the top right picture, each of our transducer wells has a survey monument on the pad. And so we get a survey grade GPS and a survey grade elevation at each of those wells. Go to the next slide. Um, this one is one of the Paulden Five, just west of the Depot 89 gas station up there in Big Chino. Go to the next slide. So this was uh, two years ago. Go ahead. Or no, you, you go back to the previous slide. 
So two years ago, this was when all the new monitor wells had been drilled and we were talking about how to go about monitoring them. So all of the green, all of the green dots minus the WMW two and three up at the top and then the Glidden well out to the east. All of those are the new monitor wells were drilled. SL1 at the bottom is also an old one. So those were, that was what was proposed. So we just started monitoring those quarterly, did manual water levels. And then on the next slide. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we move off of this slide, can I make a comment? Uh, yes, sir. Go, go ahead, John. Uh, the, the, the comment is that uh, Mr. Stoley is talking about the wells that were drilled, the new wells that were drilled. I wanted to make sure uh, that the GUAC members understood that those wells were drilled um, by Prescott Salt River Project and Prescott Valley uh, through a joint agreement uh, monitoring in the Big Chino. Uh, so we paid for those. And uh, for the installation, and ADWR graciously is, is monitoring those. Uh, under a, a, a joint cost share contract with the three parties. Okay, thank you for pointing that out, John. Thank you. All right, we can go to the next slide. So this is what we are currently monitoring. As you can see, we have added transducers into all of the monitor wells, and then the green dots are what we measure quarterly. Um, so we do those, uh, we will be doing those either this week or next week, the green dots, and then every three months after that. We can go to the next slide. And then the next few slides are just going to be showing the uh, transducers in the big Chino and hydrographs for each one uh, over to the left. You can see the site name as well as the code that we assign to each well and then the installation dates. I don't really need to explain the next few slides so we can just click through them and kind of pause on each one. The only thing that I will mention is the new monitor wells since they have been installed recently, we don't have the real-time automated hydrograph up yet. We still have to go through that data and make sure it's okay to put out there. So those right now just have the manual measurement hydrographs. <clears throat> the, so 4F1, we did include that. It actually showed a spike from one of the recent rainfalls that filled that wash behind it. So we're able to see that in real time, which is kind of the hope for some of these is kind of see how, see how they react to rains and dry periods. And And then this is a um, graphic of our stream flow measurements that we do quarterly. So we do these and the six quarterly wells at the same time, generally. Um, a lot of times the river well, you, where you see the red, the red marks in the UTM, a lot of times the river is either too shallow or it's just the water is stagnant. This week, though, the river is flowing, so we should be able to measure all of the sections. Um, this is pulled from. This is pulled from a so we've been doing a every year we come out with a water level change report. And it'll be, we do like a one year, 10 year and 15 or 15 or 20 year. So I just wanted to put up a graphic of the Verde Basin. And then the next slide is the Prescott AMA. And then there will be 
similar maps in the um, the water level change map series report that's going to be coming out from the data from our 2017 basin sweep. So this is primarily showing change in our index wells across the basins. So there will hopefully be more more data points on the water level change map series report maps. But this kind of gives you an idea of where where your decline or where your rises are going to be. Okay, that is the end of my presentation. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, yes, thank you, Aaron. This is Chris Morley, the chairman. I uh, uh, thank you for this presentation. This, as this data comes in, hopefully it'll give us a, a better idea of the health of our our aquifer. Uh, do we have any other comments from the chair members or the committee members? Mr. Chairman, this is John Munderlow. Yes, sir. Uh, the question is, are these water level change maps uh, published on your website? They will be once we get the report finished. And this, when this was that? 20, uh, so there's a, this 2019 report is not finished yet. I just, I pulled some of the maps that were already done. So when, once the report is finished, it will be published. It's in the works right now. We are hoping to have it done before 2022. Thank you. So we, we could have, when we get it published, we could maybe send out an email to the members and let you guys know that it has been published. Excellent. Good question, John. Do we have anything else from the rest of the, uh, of the uh, committee? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Jim Holt. Yes, sir, Jim. I was curious, Aaron, if uh, any of the GUAC members might be interested in joining your staff in the field to do the groundwater measurements or the stream flow measurements, if there might be a mechanism that would allow that to occur. Um, that is certainly possible. Um, that's, uh, that's definitely something we could try to work out. Uh, we are up here this week, but we're finishing up now and, and the weather's kind of been, the weather hasn't been ideal. So we are, we're finishing up probably today. So we can definitely look into the, the next time and try to get something set up. Okay, excellent. We'll, we'll gauge the interest and uh, let you know and go from there. Chairman Marley, I have just a quick comment too. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, I just want to extend a thank you for the, to the Department of Water Resources. This uh, data that's collected is just so valuable, um, not only in the AMA, but also up in the Big Chino. And we really appreciated the partnership um, with uh, recently, uh, as well as in the past, uh, to get those um, new monitoring wells equipped. And it's great to see the data rolling in. So we'll keep watching and when it converts over to um, the pressure transducer data um, online will be tracking along along with you. So thanks. Uh, you made it look so easy with all these slides, but we know it's a lot of work. So <laughs> thanks. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, Leslie. All right, continuing onward then to our agenda item five, groundwater withdrawal fee recommendation and uh, water management assessment assistance program. Mr. Chair, we do have a question uh, in the chat box, if uh, we can proceed with that one. Okay, yeah, I, I'm watching the, what question do you have? So it is from Leslie Hoy, on the water level change maps, have most of the wells declined? Yes. So any of them that are red are wells that have declined. The, the size of the dot is related to the um, amount of decline. So the bigger dots are 
uh, more decline or more rise, the smaller dots are less decline or less rise. So here on this slide, uh, to the left of the Prescott AMA label, there's a large dot. I believe that's a decline of 64 feet. Most of the declines you're seeing are anywhere from three to 10, maybe up into the teens. It's all, any, anywhere you see a red dot, there's decline in some degree. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, they're, they're, uh, it was sort of hard to read from that, but I, and if you, there, I mean, there are, there are water level change reports like this from previous years that are published on our website. And when they're, when the other, when the newer reports are published, it, it's, you're able to see it a little bit more clearly when you're viewing the report than on the presentation slide. Okay, thank you. All right, was there anything else? Before we move on to item five. Okay. I see nothing else in the chat. And thank you, Le Leslie Hoy, for your for your question and comment. Uh, agenda item five: groundwater withdrawal fee recommendation and water uh, management assistance program. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the council. Uh, before I begin, I just want to acknowledge the years of service Chairman Marley has dedicated to the Prescott GUAC. Mr. Chairman, it's been a pleasure to work with and learn from you, and on behalf of the department, I just want to thank you and wish you well in your future endeavors. Um, moving on to the withdrawal fees and the WMAP. Withdrawal fees for year 2021 are set at $2, as they have been for many years. One slight change is increasing the por portion of that that goes to the Water Management Assistance Program to $1.25 per acre foot and 75 cents per acre foot towards the administration and enforcement component. Today, GUAC members are asked to make a recommendation to the ADWR director regarding the rate of withdrawal fees for reporting year 2022, and those fees will be collected in calendar year 2023. For reference, the table on the top of your screen here provides withdrawal fee rates and money collected from the past five years. And the highlighted sections under 2022 are the withdrawal fee statutory framework. So the component of the fee that goes towards the WMAP, that's money set aside for conservation, augmentation, and research of water availability in the AMA, cannot exceed $2 per acre foot. And the admin and enforcement component needs to be between 50 cents and $1 per acre foot. Below that table uh, of, of the current break, you see a breakdown of the current WMAP fund. The current balance in the WMAP fund is $97,674, of which $14,514 is committed, and that leaves a total balance of $83,160 available. We currently have no projects outside of the ADOT project being funded with the WMAP fund, although we did recently receive a proposal that is under review for $10,000 from the City of Prescott to develop a conservation webpage. If that project makes it through the initial review process, the applicant will present at our next meeting and the GUAC can make a recommendation at that point. Since we last met, the three groundwater conservation grant project contracts have all been executed. The WaterSmart customer portal contract will expire in November of 2023. The rainwater harvesting for aquifer recharge contract will expire in March of 2024. And the stormwater recharge pilot project will expire in May of 2024. So before asking the members to recommend withdrawal fee rates for the reporting years 2022, we'll be happy to answer any questions on this document or anything that I've just mentioned. Are there any questions or comments from the uh, committee? Chairman Marley, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, yes, ma'am, Leslie. Thank you, sir. Um, I was just looking at the, the fee structure and how we've had it. We made a change last year. And um, from my perspective, I'd like to maybe see it carry as written for another year and see if that structure continues to work for us. Um, or, if, um, you know, give it another year basically and Maybe. see if this um, requirement that predominantly the, the water providers uh, pay. <laughs> according to statute for what they pump um, if this is developing um, 
a pool of monies that we can then use in, in ways that are meaningful in this area. As okay. Are, are there any uh, questions for Leslie or, or comments from the rest of the committee? Mr. Chairman, this is Jim. Uh, thank you, Leslie, for your uh, comments from the city. I'm equally curious about recommendation from the town of Prescott Valley. So maybe John could share uh, his feelings about how the current rate structure has worked. Uh, I would uh, concur and, and agree with Leslie's comments. Um, so I think that's fine. I was just about ready to second that, but I wasn't sure it was framed in the in the form of a motion. Uh, I imagine we could have uh, uh, Leslie restated in the form of a motion, but uh, yeah, we would that be okay with you, Leslie? Yes, sir. I'd be happy to. Um, I propose for a calendar year 2022 that the M map fee remain at a dollar 25. And the administration enforcement enforcement fee remain at 75 cents for a total of a two dollar fee. All right, and we have a second. I would second. We have a second. Okay, okay. two seconds. Any further discussion? Right. All all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Excellent. Moving on to agenda item six. Uh, Kyle will provide the AMA director report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will take that withdrawal fee recommendation to the director and let you all know that when it's finalized. As I'm sure you all know, annual reports are due on March 31st of each year. And now that we're about four months past this date, um, I'd like to provide a quick summary of 2020 annual reports. So about 6,500 annual reports should be filed for year 2020, and we've so far received around 6,060 reports. There are 438 fair to files remaining across all the AMAs, and that accounts for about a 6.5% fair to file rate. And this number is significantly lower than this time last year when we stood at about 10.5% at the end of August. Um, last year had some unique circumstances though, so. Looking at years beyond that, and 6.5% there to file is pretty much right on track for where we would be in a normal year. And we typically aim to end the year with a number below 5%. We sent there to file letters in mid July to owners of all missing reports, which generated an additional wave of filing. And we'll begin some final contacts with there to files in a few weeks, which we hope will be helpful in further reducing that there to file number and getting it below 5%. Um, the table on the left of the chart here breaks down the reports received by those filed online or as hard copy. And about 2,915 reports, or 48%, were filed online. And 3,145 reports, or the remaining 52%, were filed as hard copies. Um, this is an increase in the number of reports filed online and continues a trend towards filing online, which we try to encourage whenever possible for a variety of reasons. Uh, this year, in collaboration with our IT team, we made a few adjustment, adjustments to the electronic annual reporting tool to improve functionality and performance, and so far we've heard good reviews on those. Some forms of ours are not yet available to be filed electronically, such as the municipal provider reports, irrigation district reports, and BMPs. Those forms are a little bit more complex to build electronically. However, we are trying to add more forms to, to the electronic tool each year so that we can see the number of reports filed online continue to increase into the future. Submitting those reports online is beneficial to us because the data from those reports enters into our database automatically, which reduces human error and allows our staff to devote more time to quality control, planning activities, our data transparency initiatives, and other water resources efforts, instead of spending hours and hours of data entry each year. Um, we are currently transitioning from data entry to quality control checks on that reported data, and this is a long and detailed process that can take us several months but it's really critical to our statewide use estimates, estimates which we'll have completed by November 1st, and we'll be glad to present on at a future meeting. We've also dedicated a significant amount of time to developing and publishing sector-specific web pages that we've already received really positive feedback on, and Kennedy's gonna click through some of these as I speak, um, but we'll be glad to answer questions on them at the end. These pages contain information about the mandatory conservation programs, 
some details on each sector, and a frequently asked questions section. Our planners worked hard on these pages, and each one is really impressive, so I just want to encourage members and members of the public to take a look at these and let us know if you have any thoughts or suggestions on ways we can improve them. The planners are also working on sector-specific data dashboards that will contribute to our data sharing and transparency initiative and should be useful for anyone looking to learn more about water use in the AMAs. These dashboards should be published and finalized around the end of the year and will dovetail nicely with our fifth management plan process. Uh, we have a really strong team in place, a lot of talent going into these, and I look forward to sharing the finished products with you at a future meeting. Outside of our core AMA section, our groundwater modeling unit continues making progress on their projects, including finishing their updates to the Prescott AMA model, which we can present on at the next meeting, um, developing a new groundwater model for the Phoenix AMA, combining the East and West Salt River Valley and the Hacienda subbasins, updating the Tucson AMA model, and participating in the Pinal stakeholders group activities and meetings. And our field services unit is preparing the Phoenix AMA water level change map series report and conducting water level measurement site visits for index wells statewide, as Aaron discussed previously. And finally, our public stakeholder processes are ongoing. The Arizona Reconsultation Committee met on May 26th and continues to hold modeling and analysis work group meetings, having met on March 11th and May 13th since our last UAC meeting. And recordings of all of those meetings are available on our website. We've also made progress on our management plans activities, and Maggie will be providing a more detailed update later in the meeting. And likewise, the Governor's Water Augmentation, Innovation, and Conservation Council continues to hold committee meetings, and a summary of their activities will be provided by Jenna Norris here shortly. So that concludes the director's update. All right. Are there, are there any questions for Kyle? All right, no questions being heard. Thank you uh, for that presentation. <clears throat> Moving on to items, uh, Jenna will now provide us with the Governor's Augmentation, Innovation, and Conservation Council update. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenna Norris, and I coordinate the Governor's Water Augmentation, Innovation, and Conservation Council which I will refer to as the Governor's Water Council from here on out. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and council members for having me this morning. Um, and I will be sharing a brief update with you all on the recent activities of the council and its committees. Thank you. Um, I wanted to start today by showing you all the um, council webpage where you can find all previous meeting materials for both the council and its committees. Would you click on that? Yeah, thank you, Kennedy. So using, well, let wait for it to load. There you go. Using that navigation menu on the right-hand side, you'll see council activities there, if you'll click on that. And on this page, you can find all of the past meetings with meeting recordings, um, agendas, any associated documents. And also under that documents tab, you can find the annual report for both 2020 and 2021 for the Governor's Water Council. Um, and if you scroll back up, on that menu on the right-hand side, you will also see the four committees of the council and all of the uh, associated meeting materials, documents, reports produced, et cetera. So I just wanted to point that out to everybody. Um, so moving on to council updates, the council last met on July 15th of 2020, and the me meeting recording for that meeting is linked on this slide. Uh, the, during the council meeting, the committees reported out on their recent activities. The long-term water committee reported that they had met on June 29th, and at the June 29th meeting, that long-term water augmentation committee had heard a presentation on the findings of the sub finance subcommittee and a presentation on the water supply development fund from Daniel D'Alessi of WIFA. Um, additionally, the committee reported that the potential water storage sites on Arizona State Trust land and the accompanying guide were almost completed. The desalination committee reported that they had met on March 25th and had heard a presentation on the findings of the legal and regulatory subcommittee and at the council, 
the chair and council members tasked the desalination committee to resolve any remaining legal questions regarding this topic and report back to the council. Finally, the post-2025 AMA's committee co-chairs reported on the timeline and strategy for the committee moving forward, sharing that the co-chairs had selected three issue briefs to focus efforts on as they moved into the solution phase. Um, other agenda items heard during this July council meeting included a presentation from Speaker Rusty Bowers on the Drought Mitigation Revolving Fund and discussions of additional management periods, which included a presentation from Representative Gail Griffin on, on legislation she had introduced in 2018 and a presentation from the council chair, Director Tom Bishopsky, on a AW DWR proposal um, that was also from 2018 to introduce additional management period. Next slide. The next council meeting is scheduled for September 16th from 10 to noon. Um, again, the meeting webpage is linked on this slide and um, login information for the WebEx can be found on our website and I will also be sending out a reminder email. Next slide. Moving on to committee updates. The non-AMA groundwater committee is chaired by Representative Gail Griffin and Jamie Kelly. This committee has not met in 2021. And at their last meeting in December of 2020, the committee heard a presentation by the department's chief legal counsel, Ken Slowinski, on irrigation non-expansion areas and a presentation by Representative Cobb on introduced legislation for establishing rural groundwater management areas. The next meeting for this committee has not been determined. Moving on to the desalination committee, this committee is chaired by Henry Day, who replaced Philip Richards earlier this year. The committee last met on March 25th, and the meeting recording is linked here. Um, during that meeting, the Legal and Regulatory Subcommittee presented a summary of their findings and discussion, and that document is also linked on this slide. The DSAL Committee is scheduled to next meet August 26th from 10 to noon, so that's next week on a Thursday. Next slide. Continuing with committee updates, the Long-Term Water Augmentation Committee, chaired by Wade Noble, met on August 3rd. Meeting recording linked here. At this meeting, the committee heard a presentation from ADWR senior research hydrologist, Keith Nelson, on which he presented on the potential for enhanced aquifer recharge uh, at a regional scale. This committee plans to continue the conversation around the potential for recharging stormwater and flood runoff in subsequent meetings. The next meeting date for this committee has not yet been determined. The storage, subsite, storage sites subcommittee of this committee met on February 26th. The committee provided, the subcommittee provided input on the potential water storage sites on state trust land report. This report um, was required by House Bill 2249 and the potential storage sites report includes 331 potential underground storage sites and that report is set to be submitted to the required recipients by September. In addition, the subcommittee provided comments on the draft guide to underground water storage site selection, which will accompany that storage site report. And that guide is now being finalized by council staff as we work to incorporate comments. Next slide. Last, but certainly not least, you have the post-2025 AMA committee chaired by Warren Tenney and Cheryl Lombard. Cheryl Lombard replaced Timothy Tremure um, in March of this year. This committee has certainly been busy and has met twice since the last quarterly council meeting. As I mentioned earlier, the committee co-chairs have established a strategy to approach the identified issues and are focusing the committee efforts on three issue briefs out of the six, which are groundwater in the Assured Water Supply Program, unreplenished groundwater demand, and the hydrologic disconnect. The committee last met on June 22nd, in which they heard a presentation. Well, excuse me, they actually met on June 22nd, but that's not their most recent meeting. So on June 22nd, they heard a presentation from ADWR Chief Hydrologist 
Jeff Inwood, and ADWR Deputy Counsel Aisha Vora on groundwater in the Assured Water Supply Program, um, in which they focus on Pinal AMA as a case study. The committee then met again on August 10th and heard a presentation from myself and Natalie Mast on unreplenished groundwater demand, this time focusing on Phoenix AMA. The committee will discuss the final remaining issue, the hydrologic disconnect, during the upcoming meeting scheduled for September 9th from 1 to 3. And at the next council meeting, the co-chairs plan to brief the council on the presentations they heard on these three identified issues, summarize the ensuing discussion and potential strategies raised, and then move into the solution phase in October through December when they will work to fine tune the most realistic strategies and solutions proposed. Next slide. That concludes my presentation. On this slide, you will find my contact information, as well as John Riggins, uh, statewide planning manager's contact information. And um, I thank you for your attention today. And if you have any questions, I can take them now. All right. Thank you, Jen. This is uh... Chris Marley, the chairman. Uh, do we have any questions from the council for Jenna? Okay, none being heard. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Was that? Oh, oh, our next item is agenda item eight. Maggie will now provide a fifth management plan update. Maggie Martin. Thank you, Chairman Marley and members of the council. My name is Maggie Martin. I'm a management plan specialist working at ADWR on the management plans team. And today I'll be providing status updates on the fifth management plans and we'll be giving a high level overview of the various conservation program proposals. Next slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. So when developing and updating the conservation programs, this is the statute that we are working under, which states that each plan for each AMA should include a continuing mandatory conservation program and that they should be designed to reduce withdrawals of groundwater. Next slide. We started the management plans workgroup process in 2019. We've been working since then to analyze and develop the programs for the fifth management plans. We intended to wrap up the development phase at the end of 2020. However, further discussions have been needed. So this phase has continued into 2021, but we plan to finalize the last details soon. We will publish initial drafts in early 2022 and plan to adopt all five by the end of that year so that conservation programs will become effective on January 1st, 2025. Next slide. The structure of the conservation programs in those management plans largely match across the AMAs, but we have taken time to reach out and seed feedback seek feedback regarding customization from GUACs and local stakeholders. Additionally, beyond that customization, the management plan work group subgroup meetings have reconvened as we've had draft regulatory language ready and available. Next slide, please. So now I'll give a summary overview of the various conservation program proposals. Next slide. Thank you. The first is the agricultural conservation programs. The agricultural BMP advisory committee was reestablished by executive order last year and through multiple meetings developed recommendations for the BMP program in the fifth management plans. Staff would like to thank the committee members and regulated community for their thoughtful comments and suggestions and commitment throughout the process. The committee recommended updates to the list of approved practices and points targets. On the list of approved BMPs, nine new BMPs and 13 changes to existing BMPs were recommended. The updates were based on changes in technology and agricultural practices, the inclusion of maintenance and clarification of language. A substitute practice BMP was also recommended in each category 
in recognition of a need for a way to add new BMPs to the approved list as technology develops, a procedure for adding new BMPs to the approved list was also included. The committee also recommended changes to the minimum points targets in three categories, which reflects an increase in conservation in the five MPs. There was no change to the total points required to participate in the program, which remained at 12. ADWR has included all changes as recommended by the BMP committee into the regulatory language of the 5MP. Next slide, please. So next is the um, Agricultural Integrated Farm Program. The Integrated Farm Program is a new agricultural conservation program developed as an alternative to the base and BMP programs. This program is voluntary. It is an allotment-based program that would allow multiple IGFRs to be combined under one reporting umbrella. This is similar to how IGFRs can report together in the BMP program, but instead of implementing BMPs, the allotments from participating rights under the same owner operator could be combined. And that owner operator could use the water anywhere on the combined footprint. The total allotment would have a cut to the aquifer or a percent reduction of that total combined allotment. The program is a middle program between the base and BMP programs. It reduces the administrative burden of having to report and exchange flex credits on each individual right, as in the base program, but does not require the implementation and reporting on individual BMPs, as in the BMP program. Instead, the integrated farm program has the ease of an allotment-based program and the administrative benefit of the BMP program. The integrated farm program was finalized and included in the draft regulatory language, which is now available for review. Next slide, please. Next, I will talk about the municipal sector. The Municipal non -per capita Conservation Program is a BMP-based program. Municipal providers are required to implement a number of BMP points determined by their service connections. In the 5MP proposal, we adjusted the number of service connections by tier and also added additional tier so that providers would be more evenly distributed across the tiers. We also increased the number of BMP points required per tier and added a requirement that BMP points must be earned from a minimum number of categories to inc increase the diversity of BMPs being implemented. We added a new planning category, which contains BMPs related to integrated water and land use planning and other types of long range planning activities. Lastly, we adjusted many of the BMPs implementation and reporting requirements to collect more quantitative data that can be used to determine whether a BMP is effectively conserving water or not. Next slide. The municipal GPCD program is an allotment based program. The 5MP GPCD requirement calculation maintains the same default minimum and maximum structure as seen in the 4MP, but the calculations were updated to use rolling averages in order to provide more realistic requirements that still result in groundwater conservation. To ensure the 5MP proposal would result in greater conservation, we looked at the total volume of 4MP GPCD requirements versus what the 5MP GPCD requirements would have been in across each AMA. The chart on this slide shows the total 4MP GPCD requirements in light blue and the 5MP GPCD requirements volume in dark blue. We also updated the flexibility account provisions for the 5MP. The current flexibility account provisions, which account for very variations in precipitation differ across all the AMAs. They range from a negative limit of negative 20, negative 10 to negative 20, and a positive limit of 30 to 60. ADWR is proposing to streamline the flexibility account provisions across all AMAs and proposes the middle range of negative 15 to positive 45 for all AMAs. 
The current compliance GPCD calculation includes water from any source except direct use effluent and effluent recovered within the area of impact for non-irrigation use. In the five MPs, we are proposing that the compliance GPCD calculation includes all sources of water except non-potable direct use effluent and non-potable effluent recovered within the area of impact for non-irrigation use. To align with the need for conservation of all water types and the value of potable water, the proposal removes the potable effluent incentive. Next slide. Now I'll get into the industrial sector. Um, the development of the golf conservation program had several goals. One, to reduce withdrawals of groundwater. Two, to make an impact equitable between the different types of courses. Three, to incorporate realistic practices into the allotment method. And four, to increase simplicity and transparency. Previous golf conservation programs were very complex and difficult to understand for both staff and the regulated community. The final golf course conservation program was presented in a TERP subgroup meeting yesterday. The final conservation program consists of an allotment method in allotment additions and the effluent adjustment. The allotment method consists of different acreage limits and application rates for different aspects of the golf course, such as turf, low water use acres, and surface water acres. However, the method is just a way to set the allotment and golf courses may still use that water on their course as they see fit. Staff is accepting comments on this structure until August 31st. Next slide, please. The non-golf conservation program has had a few changes from the fourth management plan and are centered on the method used for developing the maximum annual allotment. Similar to the golf program, our goal was to include realistic practices and realistic application rates. The turf application rates were adjusted to represent the application rates in proportions of different uses of turf, such as decorative and athletic uses. The resulting application rates were very similar to those in the fourth management plan. The biggest change to the non-golf program is to the low water use acres application rate. This updated number better incorporates scientific data and more closely reflects the need of low water use acres. As with the golf program, the non-golf program was adjusted for each AMA. Next slide, please. The department held a public meeting on July 14th, detailing and discussing potential proposals that would simplify the recharge and re recovery programs by reducing the regulatory and administrative burden on both applicants and ADWR staff. ADWR staff is currently considering the feedback and the comments that we received from the stakeholder community on those proposals. Next slide, please. The 5MP concepts webpage has been shown several times before, but I'll briefly say that the concepts on this page are organized by subgroup. We've included interactive dashboards, illustrations and graphics, and summaries of the corresponding work group meetings, as well as comments from the stakeholder community that we've received on the concepts and proposals. We encourage you to visit this page and check it out if you haven't done so yet. The link is available on this slide here. And next slide, please. And lastly, just a reminder of the management plan promulgation process. Like I mentioned, we will be releasing the initial drafts of all of the five MPs in early 2022. Following that publication, we'll take comments from the GUACs and regulated community on those drafts. We will then publish updated drafts based on those comments and we'll begin the formal hearing and promulgation process, which will then include a formal comment period. So what I want to highlight here is that there are several opportunities for comment throughout this process. Next slide. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and, and attention. My contact information is available on this slide here, and I'm happy to take questions from the council.
Excellent. Thank you, Maggie. Are there any questions for Maggie from the council? Okay, none, none being heard. Uh, we will move on. Thank you, Maggie. Oh, the, the ninth item is our cal call to the council. Uh, do we have anything uh, that uh, council members wish to speak on? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Bob Record here. Ah. Hey. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I can't see your smiling face, but I know you're there. I, I am and I am smiling. I, I think I missed uh, part of the presentation that Aaron was making about, I'm looking for kind of a status about the grants that we uh, offered last meeting. I think it was in the second slide in his, in his presentation. Uh, and, I, and I was just curious what the status of those, uh, those uh, projects that we granted in our last meeting, what the status of those projects are. I, I you think know what I'm talking about? Sir, I think those are in the, the uh, slides that, that uh, Kyle Miller uh, put. Okay. The, uh, the groundwater conservation grant projects, the uh, uh, press water smart customer portal and the rainwater harvesting and the- Yes, yes, thank you. Those ones? Uh, yes, yeah. I believe we have those. Is Kyle still with us? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Um, so the, the contracts for all of those have been executed. Does that mean the projects are completed? No, so they're, they are um, in process right now and they expire and one expires the end of no November 2023, another the rainwater harvesting for aqua recharge expires March of 2024 and the stormwater recharge pilot project expires May of 2024. Um, I have Melissa here, who's our WMAP coordinator, if you would like any, any additional details on where we're at as far as deliverables and that kind of thing. I, I'd be interested in what percentage these, these uh, projects have been completed or, or what, where they are in progress. Uh, so the ADOT project has, had, has already received the majority of their funds. They are in the process of uh, drilling the dry well. They've had some issues with the weather. Uh, not being ideal for them to be able to drill, drill, the, drill, the, drill the dry well, excuse me. Uh, and for the other two projects, I've received one deliverable from one of those projects. I know those are uh, Mr. Munderlow's projects, and uh, he could probably, he'd be able to let me know which one I received the deliverable for. But those projects are uh, not as advanced right now at this point as the ADOT project is. Um. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just this is John Munderlow here. I can speak to those two projects. Um, <clears throat> the deliverable for the um, rainwater harvesting project uh, to provide engineering and permits and uh, um, infiltration tests, uh, PERC tests uh, was uh, was met on uh, on June 30th. Um, so we have the engineering done. We're beginning the construction phase. Uh, each one of the three sites will be built by uh, the, the individual entity uh, that is controlling the site. Uh, so we have one at the Prescott Rodeo Grounds. Uh, the city of Prescott will be constructing that facility. Uh, one site is at uh, Chino Valley Town Hall. The town of Chino Valley will um, construct that. And one site is at the uh, Territorial School in Chino Valley. And uh, Chino Valley Unified School District will construct that site. Uh, the deliverable on that construction uh, is the end of the year. The WaterSmart portal has a deliverable, which is, uh, if I recall, September 1, uh, and that is uh, basically the contract for installing. Now, remember, this is software uh, and, uh, and public outreach. Um, <clears throat> the contracts have been uh, implemented with the uh, vendor, and uh, we're looking at, uh, at having that roll out this fall. Uh, at least in beta form, and uh, we'll we'll run that through the the process of testing and uh, have that uh, well in advance of of the uh, uh, deliverable due dates. The one issue we're having is at the other end of this, one of our uh, grant matches is to install 
<clears throat> the additional FlexNet meters in Prescott Valley's water system, and we're not actually able to buy those because of the worldwide microchip shortage. Um, the devices all require these microchips, and so they can't make them. Um, so we're we're struggling with that, but that's not our fault. Most excellent. Thank you. Um, Bob Record, does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, are there any other I, questions? Chairman, can I have, offer a couple of comments? Uh, yes, sir, Jim. Uh, well, first of all, I wanted to uh, thank Kyle and the department. This was a, a pretty aggressive, comprehensive agenda. The presentations were all very well constructed. The presentations were crisp. I just wanted to thank them for a very good job. I appreciate it. And then I also want to take a moment and thank you, uh, Mayor, for your leadership. Um, uh, we will all miss you, and uh, I also wish you the very best. So if there's anything I can do to assist you, please be sure to let me know. Uh, thank you. That that blesses me. I uh, when we were talking about uh, measuring water flows in the stream beds, I. I thought back to Larry Tarkowski suggesting that I stand out in the middle of, of Granite Creek holding a transducer. So that was a, a, a quite a few meetings. I have enjoyed. <laughs> so, so, so thank Mr. you, again Chairman. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, can we ask, is that what you plan to do? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're we getting too personal. <laughs> I, I thought it was cool that Larry suggests. No, I'm not planning that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Are there any? Chairman Marley. Uh, yes. <laughs> Try to jump in and save you here. Um, I just had a, a couple. I think I can piggyback actually to Jim Holt. So um, I do appreciate. Um, you know, the AMA director is giving us so much information. And even though I try to attend most of these meet, well, let me back up. I try to attend what I can. There's still so much going on right now. And um, on that item, I wanted to, um, you know, not only a thank you, but are we able to go back just briefly to slide 35 that Ms. Norris was showing related to the long-term water augmentation committee. This is one that um, I've definitely missed. And my, my question would be, um, it was the presentation that uh, Keith Nelson had given on enhanced aquifer recharge. So the second bullet under long-term. Um, obviously I need to go listen and, and read this, but is there any information related to the Prescott AMA? And enhanced aquifer recharge potential on certain state lands in that that work. Yes, there was. Um, it's it's certainly worth going back and listening to, and that meeting and recording is linked here for easy access. And Keith did use um, Granite Creek as an example of uh, uh, it was really his main example for a, an area that has great potential for enhanced recharge. Um, not diverting water out of Granite Creek, but rather his presentation was really about being, uh, are there areas in the state using Granite Creek as his prime example where water that have high recharge potential and water from Valley Flats where maybe the hydrologic feasibility isn't quite as great could be diverted from the Valley Flats or, you know, um, routed into Granite Creek where you do have much higher recharge potential and, and how that could um, off, help offset groundwater withdrawals in that area. So um, his presentation is obviously much more technical and, and detailed than that, but um, yeah, it's certainly worth listening to for the Prescott AMA. Um, Thank you for going back to that. Um, as I said, there was a lot of information, even though I feel like I'm trying to keep in step with what you're doing. You, um, ADWR is really doing a lot of work right now and it's showing uh, in many different ways. Um, and also, the, I guess the other thing back is uh, to Chairman Marley as well. Um, I didn't realize you'd be stepping down and it's been such a pleasure 
all these years, I don't even know how many years it's been now of working with you in different uh, forums and, and uh, groups, I guess to say. And uh, so I wish you the best as well. And I hope you stay in touch. <laughs> you less. Yeah. All right. If there's, there's pardon me. Okay. If, if there's no other uh, comments from the council, uh, we now open for call to the public. If anyone has any questions, which John Munderlow can answer, uh, we will uh, glad. Kyle, do we have any uh, questions from the public? Seeing none at this time, Mr. Chair. Excellent. Well, then, uh, unless there's an objection, I will be adjourning the meeting. Hearing no objections, the meeting is now adjourned at 11.07 a.m. Thank you once again for the opportunity to serve with you guys. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Kyle.